in sections 5 and 6 of chapter 13, we will be looking at calculations related to equilibrium. As you look at the learning targets, we're going to talk about something new called the reaction quotient, which is Q. But first, let's review what the value of K, the equilibrium constant, means. When you have a value of K that's much larger than 1, that means your reaction essentially goes to completion. It's very product favored, not a lot of reactant left over. These are the kinds of reactions we focus on when we do stoichiometry with limiting and excess reactants. And when K is very small, less than 1, that means that you have mostly reactants, very little product, and the reaction does not occur to any significant extent. When we look at reversible reactions, if we have a reactant or product with a concentration of zero, the reaction will shift in the direction that will make that reactant or product. However, if we have initial concentrations for all of the reactants and products that are non-zero, then we're going to use something called the reaction quotient, or Q, to determine the direction in which the reaction will shift. We're going to use the equilibrium expression that we set up using the law of mass action. We'll substitute in the initial concentrations instead of the equilibrium concentrations, and then we're going to do a comparison between Q and our equilibrium constant, K. This is what we'll be looking at in section 6. And in this section, section 5, we'll be looking at when we have a reactant or product concentration of zero. When we get to section 6 and we start comparing Q to K, if Q and K are equal, our system is at equilibrium and there will be no shift. If Q is greater than K, then the system is going to shift to the left toward the reactants. If you have a large Q value, that means you have too much product, as we always calculate K and Q as products over reactants. So the reaction will shift away from the products. It will shift left toward the reactants. And if Q is less than K, we don't have enough product. We have too much reactant. And so then the reaction is going to shift to the right toward making products or away from the reactants. This diagram basically summarizes the last slide. Again, if we have uh, Q less than K, um, our reaction is going to shift to the right. And if we have Q greater than K, our reaction is going to shift to the left. So let's start with a problem. We've got this reversible reaction here. And it says for trial one, we'll be looking at a couple of trials. We have six molar um, iron ion and 10 molar thiocyanate ion. And they are mixed. Uh, and we get an equilibrium concentration of four molar for our product. We want to know what the equilibrium constant is for this reaction. So remember, to calculate the equilibrium constant, we must have concentrations to plug into the equilibrium expression, products over reactants. And these concentrations have to be equilibrium concentrations. So we're going to set up an ice chart. I for initial, C for change, and E for equilibrium concentrations. We were told that the iron ion concentration is 6 molar. And our thiocyanate ion concentration was 10 molar with no product initially. We were then told that the product concentration at equilibrium was 4 molar. So how did the concentration change? We went from 0 molar to 4 molar for our product, so that must mean that we added 4 molar. And now we can use the coefficients in the balance chemical equation to tell us how everything else changed. So our ion concentration, minus 4 molar, and our thiocyanate ion concentration, minus 4 molar, 
These reactants decrease in concentration. They get used up while the product increases in concentration. Six minus four is two, and 10 minus four is six. And now we have all of the equilibrium concentrations, and we can plug those into our equilibrium expression to solve for our equilibrium constant. We get an equilibrium constant of one third, or 0.333. So now let's consider the same reaction at the same temperature with the same equilibrium constant This time we have 10 molar iron ion and 8 molar thiocyanate ion. We'd like the equilibrium concentration of the product. So in our ice chart, we only know initial concentrations. Our product concentration is zero. Our reaction is going to shift in the direction to make that missing substance. So now here's where some algebra is going to come in. Our concentration of our product is going to increase by x. Our concentrations of our reactants will change by x as well, but subtracted because they are reactants. Everything's in a one-to-one -one ratio, so 1x for everything. And then we get some expressions. 10 minus x for the iron ion concentration. 8 minus x for the thiocyanate ion concentration, and x for our product. We know the equilibrium constant. We know how to set up the equilibrium expression. So we can substitute in these expressions and solve for x and come up with our equilibrium concentration for our product. All right, here's what our equation looks like. Again, products over reactants for our equilibrium expression. Now you have to solve for x. If I do some algebra, I get this equation. And there are multiple ways to solve this. You can graph it to solve for x, factor it, use the quadratic equation. Uh, we want to solve for x is the bottom line. When I solved it, I got x equals 5 and x equals 16. Only one of these answers actually makes sense. We can't do 10 minus 16 and, or 8 minus 16 and get a negative equilibrium concentration. Therefore, this is the only answer that makes sense. And this would be 5 molar, uh, which would be the concentration of our product. So now as we move on to section 6, we're going to start talking about how to use Q, the reaction quotient. When we're solving equilibrium problems, there are some steps to kind of keep in mind. Always having a balanced chemical equation for the reaction, very important. We're often going to need to use the equilibrium expression, so knowing how to write that properly is very important. We need to identify initial concentrations. We need to use those to calculate Q and determine the direction of the shift for the equilibrium if one of the substances isn't missing. We'll define the change. We'll do the change part of our ice chart. A lot of times we will use X. And then we'll use uh, the equilibrium expression to solve for X. And then we'll answer the question. So we're going to look at the same reaction that we did in the previous problems. Remember the equilibrium constant was 0.333. We're going to look at three different trials, different initial concentrations, and we're going to find the equilibrium concentrations for all the species, all the substances in our chemical equation. So the first trial gave us initial concentrations for all of the reactants and products. This is where Q is going to come in handy, this reaction quotient. We calculate it the same way we do the equilibrium constant. So 1 over 9 times 5 gives us 0 
this is less than the equilibrium constant of 0.333. So this means that the reaction is going to shift to the right. The reaction is going to make more product because we have right now more reactant than product. When the reaction shifts to the right, that means that we increase the concentration of the product and decrease the concentrations of the reactants. I'm going to use X's again. Again, they're all in a one-to-one -one ratio. So I get for equilibrium concentrations, 9 minus X, 5 minus X, and 1 plus X. I'll substitute that into my equilibrium expression, set equal to 0.333, my equilibrium constant. When I simplify, I get this equation, which I can then graph or use the quadratic equation or factor if it's appropriate, and solve for X. I get two answers x equals 14 and x equals 3. Only one makes sense for this problem to get positive equilibrium concentrations for everything. That's x equals 3. So the equilibrium concentration for the iron ion is 6 molar. For the thiocyanate ion is 2 molar. And for our product is 4 molar. And I'll add in another zero there to match the sig figs in the problem. For trial two, we'll do the same thing. We've got new initial concentrations. I'm going to solve for Q. 5 over 3 times 2 is 0.833. This is greater than the equilibrium constant of 0.333. So this reaction is going to shift to the left. We have too much product. And so we're going to subtract product and add reactant this time. If I substitute in my expressions that I have to represent my equilibrium concentrations into the equilibrium expression, set it equal to 0.333. When I simplify, I get this equation. And when I solve for x, I get two answers. about x equals 1 and x equals negative 9, and of course only one answer makes sense. So for the iron ion, 3 plus 1 is 4. For the thiocyanate ion, 2 plus 1 is 3. And for our product, 5 minus 1 is 4. For our final trial, our initial concentrations are 2, 9, and 6. Solve for Q. We get 0.333. That is equal to the equilibrium constant K. So this system is already at equilibrium. These are the equilibrium concentrations. There are a couple more problems in your notes. I'll let you try those out and we'll talk about them tomorrow.